Okay. Um, talk about why snaps are important. Snaps are important because okay. if you were to try to draw a line, you know, you could eyeball it and get it pretty close, but when you zoom in, you'll see okay. you're nowhere near. Let, let, let me give me control of the cursor, and you can do a little bit of that. Eh? Okay. Okay, okay. For, for users who are following this, we have the ability to share the same cursor across different computers. This is one of the really nice features of the CAD course training center. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, the way I approach um, TurboCAD is a little bit different than Rob. The first thing I'll notice, or I should say the first thing I noticed when I started using TurboCAD was as I moved my cursor, the X, Y, Z coordinates down here, notice that any time I'm in the drawing screen and I'm moving my cursor, those numbers are changing, right? So you've got X, which is a horizontal line, and Y, which runs vertically up and down. Um, another way to look at this is if you go to View and, I'm sorry, to Workspace, and I turn on my world coordinate system, you'll see I get a little X, Y, Z indicator. Okay. Second thing is down here in the lower left-hand corner of the screen in our what we call our status bar, TurboCAD is telling me what it's expecting me to do next. Since I have a line tool selected, it's telling me to define the start point of the line. At this point, I've got a couple of choices. As Rob was showing you earlier, you can you know, just freehand or use the snap modes Alternatively, if you know the exact starting point on the XYZ coordinate system, you can also put that in. So, for instance, I'll start a line at the zero on the Y and zero on the X, and you'll see that the line should start approximately here. So I'll come down to the XYZ field. I'll just swipe my cursor across there. Alternatively, um, we talked about the tab keys. I can hit tab once, twice. A third time gets me down into the X field there, and now I'll type in zero, hit tab to go to the Y field, hit zero, and press my enter button, and you see where the line is now starting. So now it says define the endpoint of the line, and I can again uh, either freehand or I can use a snap mode, keyboard shortcut, or if I know the precise length and angle, I can enter those in. Just type in another XYZ, XY figure there, and then go to the selection info palette okay. and show them how the, the that information is stored in the selection info. Okay, great. So, um, for instance, let's draw a 5-inch line. So I'll type in 5 here on X. I'll type in 0 on Y and hit the Enter key. And now upon selecting this item with this select tool, this allows me to highlight any object and make it editable, um, very similar to Word or most other Windows applications. So I'll select the line that I just drew. And we haven't really talked about the palettes up until now. Um, I'll close those down for now and then show you how to bring those back up in case you don't have them on your screen. I'll go to View and down to the palettes, which are listed on the view menu down here at the bottom. Uh, if you bring up one of the palettes, they'll all show up. So let's check out Selection Info. And this is going to automatically tell me the specifics about my line. Here we see that the line type is a single line, which is consistent with the type of line we drew. And then I've got the various properties, the general pen where I can change my color. Um, and down here in the metrics field, you'll see that I've got the length and angle. Let me uh, go open, back. open the start point and end point, uh, the start point and finish point. Yep, there. and you can continue to open up these um, hierarchies of information yeah. with the little plus and minus symbols. So here yeah. we see we've got the start point in X and Y. So I could actually say, okay, let's um, change the location of the finish point for my second endpoint. Um, let's make that two inches. So I'll type in two and hit enter, and you see what the change 
because it was uh, highlighted to be editable, notice the change that occurred to my actual line. Yeah, that's a new feature of the latest versions of TurboCAD. Earlier versions didn't have that, and it was always a tricky thing to change how the definitions of these objects. And later on, when we draw circles and stuff, you'll see that using that uh, selection info palette is really handy. And the, the selection info palette, of course, goes hand in hand with the inspector bar down at the bottom. It's also got a bunch of information about the selected object. You know, when you're drawing a line, the selection info is, you know, all about the length and angle. But once you've selected the line, in this case, you can see all this information down at the bottom. And those position Y, Z, and X is all about that little yellow reference point in the middle. Mm -hmm. And when we get onto that, we'll find out how important that yellow reference point is um, in relation to the object. We'll get to that when we do, okay? Okay, a couple other things we'll point out about the select tool and the information that's displayed at the bottom. This is displayed in what we call the inspector bar. If you're not showing that on your screen, what you can do is come up to Options and Desktop. And here we see the inspector bar, toggle button, and uh, status bar is the one at the bottom, which we discussed with the XYZ coordinates on it as well. Right, okay, excellent. Okay. Um, thirdly, if you're not seeing the display for the various fields when you select an item, the reason 